Many of you, maybe most of you, have heard of CCO, Catholic Christian Outreach, a wonderful university student uh, organization uh, that's actually based here in Ottawa, and I was honored to be asked to give one of the workshops for their big Rise Up conference that happens at the end of the year, so the last couple of days of December, and they, were, they asked me to speak about discernment, and so I prepared a little uh, teaching on discernment for the university students, but one of the points I make is that we're never going to have everything completely figured out. It's, this, it's just the nature of the adventure that God calls us to. You know, Jesus says to the disciples, follow me. And off they go on an adventure. And they ask Jesus, well, where do you live? He says, well, come and see. And so we have to understand that the mysteries will unfold as they're meant to unfold. And understanding will come as it's meant to, as it's meant to come. And an example of this is John the Baptist, this great prophet who knew this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who definitely had a clarity, who was able to see, but even he sends his disciples to ask, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Wow. Even St. John the Baptist wasn't sure. I think he would have been expecting that this Messiah would have probably come with a few more thunderbolts would have maybe been a little more impressive, you could say. Jesus came in remarkable simplicity, humility. So much of what he did was ordinary. He, he, he met with ordinary people, ate with ordinary people. Jesus was meek. And so John the Baptist was wondering, are you the one? We can also think about St. Joseph during this Advent season, who res resolved to dismiss uh, Mary quietly. He didn't exactly know what was going on until the angel appeared to him in a dream and told him, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. And we can even think about our Blessed Mother in Luke chapter 2 when uh, Mary and Joseph found Jesus in the temple. It says, when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And so again, this is just the nature of following the Lord, being on this wonderful adventure with the Lord. There are some things we just won't understand. And some of them, eventually we will, when the time is right. Like St. Joseph, which by the way, you know it's the year of St. Joseph, don't you? Pope Francis has declared this year, beginning December 8th to next December 8th, the year of St. Joseph. This is totally wonderful and awesome. Um, well, now, what was my point about St. Joseph? Oh, yes, the timing. St. Joseph resolved to dismiss or divorce Mary quietly. They say this decision by St. Joseph was one of the most important confirmations that the child in Mary's womb was not of man. And Joseph would have been the most obvious, likely, you know, person suspect, you know, when Mary was, was found to be with child. But no, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't Joseph. If it would have been Joseph. He wouldn't have divorced her. It wasn't Joseph. It wasn't Joseph. The child is of the Holy Spirit. And this little decision by St. Joseph is a signal to all, especially in the, in the early uh, church, that it's a signal, hey, it wasn't Joseph. So, can we say that the Lord withdrew the clarity on this until St. Joseph made this decision so people could understand that he's not the dad? You can't say he's the dad, he was go the, the biological dad, because he was going to dismiss her. And as soon as he made that decision, the angel came and revealed to him the plan. Does that make sense? Sometimes the Lord allows us to go on a little, you know, adventure. We, we make a few mistakes if, if, so that we can learn something. So, or, or we, you know, whatever. So, or sometimes even we get into a, an argument with someone we love and we think this is awful, but it's the best thing that happened to us because it kind of, you know, broke th some things open, finally talk about things. So the point is, is the Lord's in charge. He tells us, don't be afraid. Even as we're kind of going along this adventure that has so many questions in Deuteronomy, check this out. And this is, again, a God who tells us not to fear. 
even as children, we don't know always what's going on. It says, the Lord your God carried you. Deuteronomy chapter 1. This is, they, they went through the, the desert into the promised land. The Lord your God carried you as one carries his own child all along your journey until you arrived at this place. We don't realize it, but even in our fumbling, and they fumbled a lot on their journey from Egypt to the promised land, even in our fumbling, the Lord our God, our loving Father, is carrying, carrying us. He's got this. We don't need to be afraid. We need to trust the Lord.